Right, we are done. We are partly commissioned because we've got 12 millibar working pressure at the gas cock here. What do we have at the meter? Welcome to today's video. So this is an installation video with an old Turbo Max coming out and the brand new Ecotec Plus 940 going in. Now the job itself went pretty smoothly until the end when we had to commission it and it was an absolute nightmare. Watch the video right to the end. I've done another piece after the job just to explain to you exactly what's been going on and what the next steps are. So if you want to be invested in the job and in this video, watch it till the end. I'll explain what's going on and what the next step is. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get on with the video. Morning, everyone. So depending on when you are watching this, I had a really bad day yesterday and things just did not go to plan. But today, hopefully, is going to be a better day. It's an installation day. So I've emptied out half my van in the garden. The other half of my van is emptied out here into the property. So I like this Dewalt T-Stack system because it just allows me to bring everything in in one go without having to make multiple trips. And then the rest of the stuff is just out there that I'm going to need. So we have this lovely old beauty coming out, the Turbo Max, and I'm going to be replacing it with an Ecotec Plus 940. So this is the new Valent, which has got the digital display system, and they've now increase the kilowatt capacity of it from a 38 kilowatt to a 40 kilowatt for the hot water. So they, I think initially they, when they first started the storage combis, they were 937s and then they went to the 938 and now it's a 940. So similar sort of setup. It's got the storage tanks at the back and then you've got the boiler afterwards. So gonna be doing that. Luckily, this is a nice solid wall because these boilers, they weigh a ton, especially once the tanks are full and it's very front heavy as well which is why the customers had the customer cabinet removed for us. Gas is in 15 at the moment, but we are going to be upgrading that. The gas meter is down there in the basement, and it's literally just, I think, just about here. And it's coming out in 22, and there is a run where I can take it to the outside and then bring it back in the outside and come back into here. So I'm going to be doing an upgrade for the gas run as well. Power flush. System has been pre dosed a few days ago. Left my power flush machine here a few days ago as well, so that I'm going to literally going to get that set up, let that get hot, and then start doing the power flush whilst I'm decommissioning the boiler. Josh is on his way. I'm just waiting for him. He's got he's got uh, a quick little checkup for something. So as soon as he's back, he can help me carry on as well. But we've got nice nice pipe work to work with. Should get some nice straight pipe work here. So fingers crossed, it all goes to plan. It is quarter to ten. It's a late start for me because Arian was playing up this morning. He hates brushing his teeth. It's, it takes like a good 15, 20 minutes just to get him to brush his teeth, which is an absolute nightmare in the morning. But we're working through it. It just means I've got to start getting up a little bit earlier, especially on install days. Let's get this drained out and get it off the wall. Let's get the power flush running. Let's make it a good day. Let's make this day a good day. Hopefully we'll make up for yesterday. I think I jinxed myself when I said it was going to be a straightforward boiler swap. We've turned the water off, turned the mains off, but there's still water coming out the taps, even out the hot outlets. We've just found the customer's son and he said, there's a cold water storage tank in the loft. And guess what? That cold water storage tank has been feeding not just the cold supply, but the cold supply to the boiler. So that turbo max, the hot water has been coming off of that rather than off the mains the stuff you see man it's just meant to be what, what, i don't understand why people just can't do the jobs properly first time around because then this just throws a spanner in the works luckily it's not too bad because we've got cold mains coming in here cold coming out here so we're going to literally cut here elbow shoot across this joist and connect onto there so luckily it's not too bad we've got access to everything here and then we can just cut the rest of this bit out. We're not taking the tank out because that wasn't part of the job, but we've drained it out and then just gonna leave it in place for now. So yeah, a little bit extra work, nothing that we can't handle, but it's just, it's another thing to do when you've got a boiler in store and it's a long day enough as it is. 
Josh, I'm going to crack on that. I'm going to carry on decommissioning the boiler. Okay, we finally got the boiler on, running very behind. It's already 10 to one, but boy, does that stick out a lot. It's only breeze block behind here, so I've literally used every fixing hole that I can to make sure that this hangs. Power flush is on, got into the primaries. We had a bit of an issue with the cold water tank, so that took a bit of extra time. Then I was just stripping the boiler down, got rid of everything, scrapman's coming, taking everything. So now Josh is going to go around isolating the radiators and focusing on the power flush. And I'm going to focus on firstly, like I've done in my last video, pipe up everything from here in order. And then from this point onwards, it's basically just like another Ecotech Plus. So I'm going to start working on this. We valved off the cold there. The cold, everything is now off the main. So they've actually got really good flow rate here and really good pressure because they've got an upgraded water mains which again, it doesn't make sense why they still kept the cold water storage tank in the loft, whoever did the install previously. Gas as well is all done. So we've got it coming out of there. That's all tied in at the gas supply by the meter, which is down here. So Josh has done that for me. So it's a meter is right here and the gas is just going straight through there. So managed to tie it in. And then what I'm also going to do is, because it's a 40 kilowatt boiler, I want to make sure it's getting the maximum amount of gas supply to it. So normally this 15 mil, I would have cut and capped it. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep it connected and T into it with 22. So then in theory, we should be getting 22 mil supply coming from there. And I don't know how far the 22 mil is running under here before it reduces down to 15, but it will basically double up the gas supply so we should have enough gas pressure here there's only a four burner cooker here so it's not like a range cooker or anything like that so shouldn't be any problem with the working gas pressure but i want to maximize it and that's why i'm going to tie in the 15 mil down there as well so let's get piping Right, just a little progress update. So hot and cold are piped up. I'm gonna have a bit of lunch and then sort the gas out whilst we're still flushing. So as you can see with the 940s, 
Vemra to the 938, et cetera. So from this point onwards, it's like a standard Ecotech Plus. Just got to make up these additional connections initially before you do that. And you've got to do it in a specific order to make sure it all works. So now let's turn this on. So turn the water on to there. And the grub. Oh, three mil Allen key. And we'll get the the tanks filling up at the back. So let's turn. Cool. All right, that's all looking good so far. So I've let the tanks fill up, then we'll test the hot water pressure. But yeah, we are. It's what ten to two. So considering we didn't get the boiler on until I think it was midday or so, I can't remember now. Not doing too bad. Coals, hot and coals are done. And I'm going to do the gas next and then the flow and return once the flush is finished. But now, time for a bit of lunch. Power flush is finished. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But then they have changed, I think half of the radiators in the prop to new. So that probably helped with the flush as well. So it's not too bad. And I'd pre-dosed it a few days earlier. So that's helped lift off the dirt a little bit. So I'm going to clear that up. Josh is going to sort out the gas now. So I've punched the hole through with the 28 mil pipe to use as a sleeve. And then from here, we are going to use, where's that T1? I think Josh has got it. Yeah, got that reduced T. So we're going to put that here. So that will drop onto there. And then the rest of it will go 22 straight into the gas supply there. So yeah, let's crack on with that. Time is 10 to four. We're piped up. That's all looking good. I've called the hole for the condense as well. So we're gonna run it out an inch and a quarter. Flow return, hot, cold gas, that's all done. Gas is coming in from there. Titans test is done. Josh, happy? Ecstatic. Ecstatic. So yeah, we're making decent progress considering we had a bit of a rocky start. So I'm now gonna, I've got to do this wiring for the shunt pump inside the boiler. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pressurize the heating system or the central heating system in a bit. We're gonna sort out, just gonna focus on the condense run. I'm gonna do the wiring here. Then I've just got to do the PRV. We've got the second discharge for the 940 as well. So I've got to tie that in as well. And then obviously fuse pairs there, which is perfect. And from there, I'll put in my thermostat, probably just straight into a patris underneath it. And then from there, I'll go up into the boiler. So luckily where everything is on this side, all the boiler cable entries on the left-hand side as well. So it just makes it a little bit easier. So the cables should run a little bit more neater. So yeah, let's just crack on with it. Right, we are pretty much nearly done. Just the wiring left to do. So condense is done. Josh has done a nice sexy bend on the condense pipe. PRV is done. The secondary discharge is done as well. Condense, pipe snugged it and running. Straight out into the gully. Discharge is down there. And now I've just got to wire in the thermostat. I've wired in the shunt pump already. Now this is something, which is a bit of a gripe for me from the new valence. And it's not only just because this has got a big plate on it, even the normal combis, which has got the smaller plate, the wiring terminals or the wiring entry point are right at the back there. Now before, the plate used to sit, I think further back on the older Ecotec Pluses, so you could and I believe the wiring entry points were sort of near the front. Now that's right at the back. It just makes it a lot more difficult. I'm, I mean, there's nowhere for me to, I can't get my hands in through there. Around the back, it's tricky as well. So yeah, I'm not happy with how they've done that. But other than that, inside the PCB, you've seen on the last Ecotech Plus that I've done, it's all pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna sort out the wiring now. Boiler's still holding pressure, which is good. It means we haven't got any leaks. And then we can, Get the commissioning done as well. Right, Josh has just added the inhibitor into the rad. Now it's the moment of truth. Three amp fuse because there's a 13 amp in the old spur. We are wired up. Boom. I do like the display on this. Right. Let's start getting it commissioned. I'm going to hear that going in a minute. 
There we go. That's, that's hissing away nicely. I'm gonna get the commissioning done and then we'll get we'll come back in the final video of everything, but yeah, it's looking good. Right, we are done. We are partly commissioned because we've got 12 millibar working pressure at the gas cock here. What do we have at the meter? 13. I was bricking it because I was thinking, we've done this gas run, the boiler's seriously under gas, we've messed up the gas run, but we haven't. Our gas run is absolutely fine. We've got the millibar difference, but there's a problem with the supply pipe work from Cadence. So I've called them out. They're gonna come tonight. They need to sort that out. Need to have a minimum of 19, work, uh, 19 millibar working pressure. That will then give me 18 at the gas cock. Now obviously inside, it's gonna absorb a little bit more as well. So my combustion readings are all fine. So no issues with that. Other than that, it's all been commissioned. It's gas rated spot on as well. Just a touch above 40 kilowatts, which is exactly what it needs to be. Um, hot water is running absolutely fine. Customers are happy. Uncle, you happy? Uncle's happy. I'm happy. I'm over the moon. He's over the moon. <laughs> well, I will be happy once Caden come and sort this out. But other than that, I'm happy considering it's 7.53. We started late. We had a few hiccups along the way. But for me, this is still a decent time to finish off. So I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching the video till the end. Now, just to update everyone, the customer did have Caden come out. So the first engineer who came out was rubbish. He didn't do anything. He said, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. This, that, the other. I then went back the next day to check the working pressure. It was exactly the same. There was no difference whatsoever. And I knew this. So I then called out Caden again. They sent another engineer and this guy was actually more switched on. He called me when he was on site and he asked me basically what was going on. I explained to him that we had, uh, what was it? 12 millibar at the boiler and 13 millibar at the meter. So he said he's going to do his checks and he's going to give me a call back, which he did. And he confirmed that, yes, the incoming working pressure to the meter was horrendously low. So he then escalated it and got the, I think it's the repair team or whoever then they deal with upgrading the gas pipe and everything. So all that was done. And the customer sent me some videos. They've actually moved the gas meter to towards the front of the property. They dug up the customer's driveway to upgrade the incoming gas main supply to it. And then where I did my 22 mil connections going off the meter was originally, they have upgraded that to 28 mil where they've moved the meter further forward to the property. I'm yet to go back to the property to do my working pressure checks because I've just been absolutely flat out. Um, so I haven't had time, but I will go back there and I will check the working pressure and I will update you in the next video, not the next video, in the respective video once I've had a chance to do that. So keep you guys posted. Hopefully I'll try and get around there as soon as possible because it's all been done. So I, I just want to have it all signed off as well properly and know that it's all good, which I think it will be now. But as always, if you've enjoyed this video and you've watched this to the very end, thank you very much. Last thing if you could do for me, just hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you haven't already. We're at the end of the video. Just do it for me now before it ends and then the next video will be coming on Thursday. So enjoy. I'll see you soon.